the best writing prompts for chat GBT. Let's get to it. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is David and in this video, I'm gonna share with you the best writing prompts for ChatGBT. ChatGBT is an AI writing system where you enter in a text prompt and then it generates a response based on what text prompt you put in, helps it craft a more accurate and helpful response. So it is quite important to know what the best writing prompts are to get the most out of ChatGBT. So if you're ready to get started, let's jump into my laptop and begin. Number one is the rewrite prompt. So the rewrite prompt is exactly what it sounds like. You just type this rewrite prompt in and then you enter in a paragraph and it rewrites the paragraph in a unique way. So let's take a quick example. So I have teach English in Thailand. Let's highlight this little paragraph right here up to the 3000 USD. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste this in, rewrite this for me. And there we have it. So we have an effective rewrites of the previous paragraph that we enter. Now, of course, you can expand on the rewrite prompt to your liking. So rewrites as a five-year-old, rewrites with longer sentences, shorter sentences as bullet points, whatever you need. Anyways, that's number one, the rewrite prompt. Number two is return only the main response. So sometimes when you ask a question to chat GBT, it tends to be a little bit verbose and you can kind of shorten that down. So for example, if I type in something like, I don't know, let's say, how do I open a durian? Put that in and it'll give me a little bit of a preamble and some bullet points and then a little conclusion. Uh, but then if I put in the uh, prompt, it'll shorten everything down quite nice. Okay, so let's ask the same question with the prompt return only the main response, remove pretext and post text. So let's go ahead and do this. And there we go, a nice, short, concise paragraph that we can use. So if you're looking for a way to reduce ChatGBT's tendency to produce overly verbose responses, try the prompt return only the main response, remove pretext and post text. Anyways, that's number two. Number three is style dictation. So you can set ChatGBT to return its responses in a clear and specific way to your liking. So for example, I have it set to write at a fifth grade level, use clear and simple language, short sentences, avoid jargon, etc. And you can edit and adjust this prompt to your liking. And there we go. We have a nice effective response that's at a reading level that most people can understand. Now you can set the prompt to be a lot more complex so we can change this around completely. So instead of write at a fifth grade level, let's write at write as a doctoral student. Use clear and complicated language biased towards long sentences and we'll say use jargon how do i write a blog post let's go wonderful so chat gbt gave us a nice sophisticated lengthy detailed response so i really like this prompt uh, depending on the type of content that you're trying to create and what your target audience is Anyways, that's number three, style dictation. Number four is format your response. So I find this helpful because it avoids chat GPT from creating a massive wall of text. So let's type in how to teach English in Thailand. We'll put that in and see what we get. So I have it set to format your response using markdown, using subheadings, using headings, using bullet points, bold, organized information, whatever. And again, this just simply avoids a wall of text. And I find this just a little bit more functional and useful for creating any type of blog post. And I'm not saying you should like copy and paste this into like WordPress, but it just helps you structure everything. It also gives you a clear idea of like things that you need to be including in your piece of content. So for example, like teaching abroad in Thailand, like talking about finding a job and how to find a job, talking about visa requirements, talking about cost of living and salary, things that people would be interested in and knowing. And so overall, I find this very helpful format your response. Anyways, that's number four, format your response. And of course, you can expand upon this easily by adding in use headings, subheadings, bullet points, bold, etc. Number five is give bullet points a step by step process, etc. So this is very simple writing prompt that I like to use when you just need bullet points. So maybe you're using another tool like Jasper AI and you're structuring a blog post. Maybe you're just writing a blog post yourself and you wanna know what points to include, or perhaps you're writing a script for a YouTube video and you just want the main points about what to include without all the verbose intro and outro text. So let's give bullet points step-by-step -step process how to create 
a WordPress website. Let's see what it comes up with. And this is fantastic if you're trying to create a blog post on how to create a WordPress website because it covers all the important information that you need to cover. So this is not good enough by itself to just copy and paste into WordPress. You're crazy if you do that. But this is a very nice outline. Choose a domain name, web hosting provider, branding, etc. How to install WordPress, install plugins that you need, create content, customize your website, optimize the website for search engines, testing the website, launching the website, maintaining it regularly. Of course, you can expand into other areas like how to monetize your website, etc. It doesn't cover everything, but this is a good general outline. So this is why I really like the give bullet points, give a step-by-step -step process for any type of content because it really covers the overarching things that you need to include within your content. So anyways, that's number five, give bullet points. Number six is use figurative language and short pithy sentences. So I really like this prompt because it ends up creating pretty useful sales copy for any type of like Facebook ad, uh, etc. So if you're writing, trying to write like short pithy copy, this is a great little prompt. So why should I use chat, chat, chat GPT? <laughs> okay, let's see what it comes up with. Fast answers, no research required, expertise at your fingertips, chat GPT simplifies your search for knowledge. This is outstanding. So this is great copy. You could take this, edit to your liking, maybe expand upon it, and then use it for any type of paid ad that you're potentially running. Anyways, that's number six. Use figurative language and short pithy sentences. Number seven is a copywriting prompt that I like to use. So you can include persuasive tone, rhetorical questions, metaphors, analogies, literary devices. And what ends up happening is it outputs a response that's just overall good copy uh, that you can use for your own specific marketing purposes. So why should I use chat GBT? Let's fire this up. And immediately it leads off with this, like, let me paint a picture for you. Imagine you're embarking on a journey. This copy is really nice because it helps connect more emotionally with the reader instead of being like a real boring technical, like use chat GBT because of this technical point and this technical point, et cetera. And instead it uses again, uh, analogies and literary devices to help you better understand why you should be using this AI tool. So for example, like if someone asks me like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I create websites that rank in Google using SEO. Like that's a nice, description but like sometimes it's better to maybe connect a little bit more deeply like you ask the person a rhetorical question like hey have you ever searched for something on google and then a website pops up that's really helpful oh i create that type of website that helps people kind of better understand from a layman aspect if they're not uh, sophisticated on the specific topic that you're talking about anyways that's number seven a copywriting prompt that uses persuasive tone rhetorical questions storytelling metaphors analogies and other literary devices Number eight is write in a conversational way, and then you can expand upon it as you need. So I have it personal way, explain something to a friend, use natural language, person like a person would use in everyday conversation, etc. All right, so this output is very useful for the formation of a blog post. Maybe you could use it for the introduction and the conclusion. You will have to edit it, obviously. Uh, it does tend to use exclamation marks like Jasper AI, so you want to jump in and fix that. Uh, but overall, it's just a very conversational, personable paragraph. And I really like this because it's not written at like a super advanced level. This is more like a eighth grade level. It's not too complicated. And I think it's just perfect for any type of introduction and conclusion within a blog post. Or if you just want to create a response on Twitter, for example, you could always use this prompt. Anyways, that's number eight, right in a conversational way. Number nine is use simple language to convey complex ideas. So this prompt is really helpful for writing something a little bit more sophisticated that still uses readable uh, language for most end users. So let's type in how to create a website and see what it produces. And there you have it. So the prompt was break down complex concepts and easy to understand frameworks and models, provide actionable and practical takeaways. And the response is nice and clear, simple, good language, not too complex, not too difficult for an average user to read, but not simple either. Has a nice level of sophistication and it's appropriate for any type of business setting. So anyways, that's number nine. Use simple language to convey complex ideas.
Number 10 is use a formal academic tone paired with sophisticated vocabulary and grammar. So to be honest with you, this one is not particularly useful some of the time because you do end up with a very technical detailed analysis that actually uses sophisticated language that may be above the reading ability of some of your users, depending on what topic you're writing about. But if you want something that's more sophisticated, detailed, uh, higher level, educational level, that type of thing, then this is a great prompt. So I have, why should I use chat GBT? So let's see what it produces. And as you would expect, the response is a little bit more sophisticated with higher level language. So it talks about how chat GBT is a sophisticated machine learning model benefits of using this or that provides clear and accessible explanations of complex scientific concepts. It's accessible at any time from anywhere, making a highly convenient tool for those seeking assistance available 24 seven. Another benefit is that it provides a wide range of perspectives, particularly used for individuals who are seeking information on controversial or complex issues, etc., etc. Anyways, that's number 10. Use a formal academic tone with sophisticated vocabulary. Number 11 is keyword research with chat and GBT. So yeah, you can do keyword research with this AI tool. So I've put in, give me 10 relevant, unique topics under the category of enter whatever category you want to create content on. So I have domain names. So let's fire it up and see what we get. Wonderful. So now we have a nice list of different keywords that we can jump into even more deeply. We can do keyword research using a proper tool like Ahrefs or Uber Suggest to kind of find more information. We can even use Google as well. Now, if you want chat GBT to dive into more detail on a specific topic, you totally can. So I have it set to give me five different keyword variations for item number seven, which is this one right there, domain name trademark infringement, how to protect your business that address a unique search intent. So let's go. And there you have it. So we have five more additional keywords that we can take and explore. So for example, we have this one right there, domain name trademark, what to do when someone steals your domain name, the difference between domain name trademark infringement and cyber squatting, how to respond to a domain name trademark infringement claim, a little quick explanation of the concept behind it, this specific keyword. Now we can take each of these individual keywords and put them into a keyword research tool to see if there's any search volume and, and go to Google and see what's ranking, etc. So this is how you can use uh, chat GPT for keyword research. Anyways, that's number 11, keyword research. Number 12 is creating titles with chat GBT. So titles are useful for blog posts and YouTube videos. And some topics are kind of just boring and they're difficult to word in a compelling, unique, fun, click worthy way. And chat GBT is actually pretty good at coming up with titles that you can then take and edit on your own. So I have it set to create 10 compelling clickbait titles for how to create a website. Let's go. Okay, so now we have 10 different titles that we could use for our blog post or a YouTube video that we can edit and adjust to our liking. And if you don't like any of these, then you could just have it rerun again. Or if you want to expand ChatGBT on any one of these, you could just use the same following prompt that I did in the previous step. So uh, expand upon number whatever. So let's go ahead and do that actually. So I have it set to give five more titles like number five, which is design your own stunning website, the ultimate step-by-step -step guide. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you have it. So we have step-by-step -step guide for designing a website that will wow your audience, creating a website for beginners, complete walkthrough, website design made easy, crafting online presence, et cetera, and so forth. So chat GPT is very helpful if you need to come up with compelling titles for blog posts, as well as YouTube videos. Anyways, that's number 12, creating titles. Number 13 is create an outline for a specific topic for a blog post. This is very helpful for understanding what you should incorporate into the blog post. Helps give you inspiration for what content to write. It may even give you other ideas for a different type of blog post that you can go more into more in detail. Now, I'd always recommend that you use like Google Search Console. You take a look at Google, you take a look at other websites and see how they're already structured because take a look at the top five websites and how they're their structure and what topics they're covering because that gives an indication of what you need to cover but using this function within chat gbt to create an outline gives you additional ideas so let's go ahead and see what we get okay so this is very helpful so it tells me that, that the introduction should be a quick explanation of what the brave browser is maybe talk about how the brave browser makes money how to earn BAT tokens, how BAT works, setting up Brave Rewards wallet, tips for maximizing your BAT earnings, becoming a content creator and getting verified. Now, some of these are not entirely accurate. You are going to still have to do research, but again, like I said, 
uh, it just gives you an idea of what to include. So for example, participate in the Brave referral program. So Brave doesn't have a referral program anymore and they haven't had a referral program for quite some time. So creating a piece of content on that would make your article completely inaccurate. But overall, it covers a bunch of different topics that are useful. So for example, like use Brave browser for online shopping or how to spend your BAT and buy goods. Like that could be an interesting topic that you could cover. Anyways, that's number 13, create an outline. Number 14 is write meta descriptions for blog posts. So I find this really helpful because I don't like writing meta descriptions for blog posts. So you have your whole blog post. When you do a search for something on Google, it gives a little bit of a text along with the title. On my website, I have the meta description appearing right here. And again, it's just annoying to write. And so with ChatGPT, you can have it generate something for you. So I have write a meta description that is 150 to 156 characters for a page title, how to make money on Twitch as a streamer. Let's see what we get. Perfect. Learn how to make money on Twitch as a streamer with our comprehensive guide. Discover the tips and tricks to monetize your content and grow your audience. So looks good to me. Anyways, that's number 14, write meta descriptions. Number 15 is to proofread. So you can copy and paste in paragraphs that you've written within your blog, put it in ChatGPT, ask it to proofread, and it'll tell you what to fix. Now, it won't highlight anything, but it'll give you a broad idea about how to better improve your paragraph. So for example, I type in proofread. Let's type in I go to store and see what we get. Proofread. I go to the store and we can take this and fix our paragraph. So it works well with any piece of content. It could be much more longer and comprehensive and it'll just fix it. So anyways, that's number 15, proofread. Number 16 and last is that you can generate code snippets with chat GBT. So this is one of the most powerful features of chat GBT in my opinion, that if you have any type of coding question about how to do something, you can just ask and it'll give you the answer, give you a basic framework to work with. So like, for example, give the regular, give the regular expression to show who, what, where, when, how first words are in the match. And then boom, here you go. This is all I need. Then I got the uh, regular expression right there. Or if I have this right here, uh, write structured data for tutorial markup. The name of the tutorial is how to create a website in seven steps, complete all the fields. Here you go. <laughs> really nice. And then even something simple like this, like how do I hide text with CSS? And then it gives you a bunch of different answers that you can work with. So anyways, that's number 16. You can generate code snippets with it. And number 17 is act as a plagiarism checker. So I have an article I wrote over here about how to make money on Twitch. And I took the first paragraph and I used act as a plagiarism checker and the paragraph that I wrote and it told me that the first sentence appears to be original, but the second sentence appears to be plagiarized. This is a very helpful prompt if you're outsourcing content and you just want to check to make sure that it is original. Also, broadly speaking, this act as prompt is really useful and fun to use because you can tell the AI to act as a motivational coach and write content in that type of format, whatever, uh, you can really play around with this, but act as a plagiarism checker, I find to be very helpful. Anyways, that's number 17, act as a plagiarism checker. Number 18 is domains and branding. So one little feature about this AI tool that I like to use is to come up with domain names. So you can just put in, write 10 excellent creative domain names about, then enter your keyword phrase, and it'll generate you a nice list of domain names. Then if you if there's one in particular that you like that you want more like this, then again, you could just navigate down here and just tell the AI to give me more domain names like this one, for example, eslinthailand.com. So I'm sure a lot of these are already taken. But again, if you're having trouble like branding a website, finding a domain name, branding a product, you can use this AI tool to help you come up with clever, creative ideas. Anyways, that's number 18, finding domain names and overall branding. Number 19 is write an email newsletter. So you can input something like write a 140 to 150 word newsletter about a new blog article, a new YouTube video, whatever about this specific topic. Again, you can always adjust and edit these things as you see fit. But again, you can just tell it to write a newsletter and then boom, here we go. Here's a nice little newsletter. Uh, you can change things around like dear subscribers or you can have the short code for subscribers in here, a short code for name. So when you email this out, 
inputs the user's name if you are collecting names along with email addresses you can even tell us to like write a follow-up email to this so you could create a nice quick little onboarding process a nice little email sequence again it's going to take a human touch to edit and adjust and make things a little bit nicer of course but it's a good framework to get started with anyways that's number 19 write a newsletter and number 20 is social media content. So in this example, I told it to create a tweet about eight ways to find your dream job. And here is the output so we can edit and adjust this to our liking. I even told it to create a tweet thread about eight ways to find your dream job. And here we go. So obviously we're going to want to edit this to make it better, but it's a nice framework that we can take and work on. Anyways, that's number 20, social media content. All right, everyone, that's it for this video on the best writing prompts for ChatGBT. Overall, I think ChatGBT combined with something like Jasper AI is a really powerful one-two punch to allow you, a solo creator, to create content really quick and easily. Now, I don't think it's going to replace professional writers anytime soon. And if you are running a content marketing business, you definitely should be pivoting towards using these AI tools, but you shouldn't just be relying on them alone. Because let's face it, people want that human touch. And that's what's going to be unique in the future, as strange as that sounds. Because if you're doing research on like the best cameras for YouTube vlogging or something like that, you want the opinion of someone who actually vlogs. You don't just want the opinion of an AI machine that's going to spit out some type of generated response. Anyways, I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got value out of it. My name is David. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.